Here we will talk about three methods to do a QR factorization of a matrix. Okay. The first one uh, will be using Gibbons rotation. So a given rotation, basically, uh, it's a matrix that has the following structure. So here we are in two dimensions, but we can do that in whatever dim dimension we want. Um, so um, basically the C stands for cosine and the S for um, sine. Okay. Of some angle the trade phi. Okay. Uh, most of the time we don't need to find the angle. Okay. And um, to so you can use a given rotation to find the QR factorization of a matrix. Um, so um, what we do basically is um, we apply successive rotations let's call it uh, let's call the the matrix uh, j1 or j2 or whatever we apply that so, to some matrices a and finally we will obtain an upper triangle matrix r and then to find the uh, q we we know that uh, a equals q r we also know that q transpose a is equal to r because remember Q is orthogonal, so Q times its um, its transpose or Q times transpose times Q is equal to the identity, and so we know that uh, all the given rotation that will be applied are equal to Q transpose. So if we transpose that, here for example we know that Q will be equal to J one transpose. J2 transpose. Because remember, when you transpose, you flip the order, okay? Um, and uh, so this is our given rotation in two dimensions. Um, the cosine... Um, how can I explain that? Uh, when you are in more, more dimensions, there will be ones on the diagonals. Okay, and zero everywhere else. Okay, uh, you could also do, for example, um, minus c s c. Okay, um, or um, what you can also do, for example, is c minus s zero one zero 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 c s. That's also a possibility. There, there should always be some um, uh, rela relation the, between the position of the cosines and the sines. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I hope you understand what I say. And so, um, basically, the procedure is as follow. Let's say. Uh, um, uh, we we have some matrix A with all its elements A1, 1, A2, 1, A3, 1, A1, 2, A2, 2, A3, 2, A1, 3, A2, 3, A3, 3, 3. Okay? The procedure is as follows. Uh, choose what element you want to eliminate um, and uh, your cosine cosine will be given by um, the element at the top of the vector so here we are in the first column vector of a so the first element will be a11 over the square, square root of a11 squared plus the element we want to eliminate squared. Okay, for sine is similar. It's the inverse basically. It's uh, the element we want to eliminate over the square root of this element, and the element at the top. 
okay then you plug them in in your matrix and the matrix has the following form um, here we are in three dimensions so our first given rotation will be also uh, in three dimensions the minus sign of this formula the minus sign will always be in the position of the element we want to eliminate so here the element we want to eliminate is the the second row first column so minus sign will be in the second row first column and so the cosine will be just uh, on the top uh, and so the matrix will have the following form okay and there will be a one here in the um, um, in the diagonal okay Okay, and so uh, you calculate your, your cosine and sine. Okay, and then you uh, you put the, them in your matrix, and then you apply your matrix to A, and then you should get some matrix, um, some other matrix, but with a zero in the place of the element you want you eliminate it. Okay. And then you do again the same thing with now this element. Um, so it's a uh, it's a free one, uh, a free one. So your cosine will be given by the element at the top. So a one one. So here it is a 1 1 over the square root of the element squared plus the element we want to eliminate and sine is the opposite so the element we want to eliminate over the square root of the element squared plus the top element okay um, and now once you've done that um you have no some matrix uh, so first you of course you uh, let's call this a1 so after you applied your first rotation so uh j you apply j2 to a1 you get some result and uh, I, I forgot to say it but uh again the um let's just clean down J2 will have the following structure, remember the minus sign will be in the position of the element you want to eliminate so then we can um, um, uh, we know that the uh, will have the following structure Okay. Remember, the minus sign is always in the place of the element we want to um, eliminate. Okay. Um, now we will have some matrix. Let's call it A two with the following form. Now we we'll want to eliminate this element here. Now. We, we we will have to be careful because um, once you finished with your first column uh, you will only consider um, here you will only consider the sub matrix okay uh, if we would we are in four dimensions for example here you will also um, um here we would also consider once you, we are finished with our first column we will also consider the first uh, the the sub matrix and then once we are finished it so once there are um zeros here and here we will again consider the 
sub sub matrix. Okay, and uh, you will do that always in this way. Okay, um, and um, um, also the structure of the Gibbons rotation it uh, won't change. But when you will then apply it to A, um, you will put ones in the diagonal and then he will have your uh, rotation and this will be your given rotation that you, you will apply to to a okay because uh, if you only consider sub the submatrix or given rotation will not be in the same dimensions as a okay because here if you only consider the the green submatrix uh, or given rotation will be in Three dimensions, but here in our case A will be in four dimensions. So in this case, we will just uh, add a one, and here we will put our given rotation. So our given rotation here is in three dimensions plus one dimensions. There will be zero elsewhere, and uh, that's the rotation that we will apply to A. Okay. Um, and so our first column will remain intact. Okay. And uh, so, if we only consider the submatrix, the um, the top element of the vector, uh, it will be the top element of the vector in the submatrix. So, uh, in our case, um, let's um, uh, let's re make our first example. Um, with the elements of A, but now zeros in the first column. Uh, here, if we only consider the submatrix, um, the top element will be of the second column of the the second column vector of A or the first column vector of the submatrix, the top element will be this one. Okay, so cosine will be given by the top element, so A two two over the square root of this element plus the element we want to eliminate. Okay, and for sine, it will be similar. Again, the top element will be the top element of the sub of the vector in the sub matrix. Okay. And uh, so, and remember, so here we want to eliminate a r a three two. So uh, our given rotation, basically, first it will be. Uh, uh, if we only consider the submatrix, it will be in two dimensions. And so remember, the minus sign is where the element is that we want to eliminate. And now, uh, our true rotation that we will apply to A, we will put a 1 in the diagonal, and then our given's rotation here. And so this will be the following. Okay? And then we will apply it to uh, A. Uh, then we will get, let's call it A3. And finally, once you finished, you will get your, uh, if you apply all this uh, given rotation, uh, to A, you will get your uh, sorry. This you will get your upper triangle matrix. Okay. Uh, I think we will not make a one here uh, because it's the third. It will, would be the third rotation basically. Okay. Do you see what I mean? Because uh, we have to do three rotations to get an upper triangle matrix. If I is in a 3 by 3 matrix, okay? 
except if one element is already zero. And then uh, remember, so Q transpose A is equal to R. We know R, and so the sequ uh, all these uh, given rotation here, they are equal to Q transpose. And so you can find Q, if you find the transpose of that. Prime transpose. And then yeah, you have your uh, QR decomposition. You know R. So that's the result you get if you apply all these given rotation. And you know Q also. Um, and so yeah. So just uh, remember. Um, yeah, you, you remember that um, your given matrix, given rotation is in the following form. So there are always C minus uh, minus sine cosine. Uh, there are ones in the diagonal, and the minus sign is always in the position of the element you want to eliminate. And the uh, cosine is given by the element at the top. So top over the square root of top squared plus uh, the element we want to eliminate. And sine is the inverse. Uh, okay. And... Um, Uh, yeah, if uh, once you are finished with the first column, you then only consider, uh, let's make a 5 by 5 matrix. Uh, I don't think it has always to be a square matrix. I think you can apply it uh, with non-square matrices. I, I'm not sure right now. But then you will just not get a square upper triangle matrix, I think. Uh, so here, remember that you, once you finish your first column vector, you only consider the sub-matrix. And so the top element of the vector, to find the cosine and sine, will be top element of the vector in the sub-matrix. And then you, uh, once you finish with your second vector, you consider the sub sub matrix then sub 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 matrix and so on okay and so you can apply it to n elements and then uh, your rotation you will put ones in the diagonal uh, of the vectors that aren't considered in the sub matrix okay so if you we consider the first sub matrix the first column vector is not considered it's not in the sub matrix so we just put a 1 in um, the diagonal and 0 elsewhere. If you only consider the purple, there will be a second 1 in the diagonal of the second column vector. Uh, uh, and so on. And then you have your um, given sortation. Okay? So that's how you proceed. I think it's clear. I think uh, I hope I didn't trouble you, disturb you too much. Uh, and uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I think I will continue in the next videos about the two other procedures I wanted to I wanted to do in this video. Uh, but yeah, I will. I think I will do other video about the two other procedure. Thanks for watching.